Hi, welcome to Tea Talks. My name is Fred the Third. You all know Matt. Matt. Um, today we're gonna drink some raw puer. Um, we're actually gonna drink two guy wands with the same tea in it. The only difference is this tea I bought in 2019. I bought a cake of it. And this cake I recently bought in 2020. The reason I wanted to do um, a little tea episode about this is this one's been storing in my room where the temperature has increased and there's a bit of humidity. And this one's just been stored dry in Kungming, China. And we'll see if Matt can uh, taste the difference. Yeah, we'll do a little comparison. What tea are we drinking, Matt? So we got all the specs here for the tea. So both cakes uh, are a spring and mostly autumn season. Uh, the year is between 2011 and 2014. Um, and the region is basically all of Yunnan. Um, Yiwu, Menghai, Samao, and Mengku. The price, Canadian, is 79.68. Uh, in American, that's 59.50. And yeah, we'll be drinking eight grams e each in 100 milliliter Gai Wans. Yeah, and you forgot the name, it's the 2014 Impression from Yunnan Source. 2014 Impressions, yes. The name is important. Yeah. It may have um, Gushu material, it may have wild material, I'm not sure, but it's a commagomation of all really nice material, I think. Nice, I'm excited. Well, yeah, a lot of people say um, if it's not wet stored to parameters of like maybe I don't even know, but I'm assuming it's about 28 Celsius and 70 humidity. They they claim that the, the tea just dies. Mm. They claim that the tea becomes dead. And I don't believe, I think it would be way, way, way drier and still be good. And a lot of other people do. But the traditional storage and more modern storage, there's um, a divide mm. of opinions. But I would like to know if you can taste the difference between the storage and if you think, so with raw puer um, storage, <clears throat> you would hope that the tea oxidizes. So it goes from fresh green to a slow dark color, slowly over time, and that it ferments. These are the two things you're gonna want to happen when storing raw puer. Anyways, let's smell, smell the guy wants. Okay. This is, smell the fresh one first. Okay. Mm, very nice. Mmm, yep. Mm. Different but closer. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. a little deeper. Nice sweet mm. smell to both of them. That's what mm -hmm. I get. A little fruity. So. Yeah, definitely. So here's the thing too, there's so many teas in this um, that each cup or each time you brew a guy one, the tea could taste different anyways. These two cakes probably did taste different anyways, mm -hmm. but the taste difference that I've noticed from this is storage taste difference. This is a nice second row. Whoa. It's a talkative kettle. Uh, tea table. Or is that your tea table? Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so I think this is a um, really powerful tea. That's a lot of fun flavor notes. Mm -hmm. I've definitely noticed cup for cup it tastes different. Okay. And change steep for steep for sure. So we'll do Kunming storage first. Alright. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Nice. Really buttery. Mm hmm. Buttery. Salty, floral, fruity, peaches. Good, strong astringency to it. Mm hmm. Like a bit of a bite, but like a smooth bite. Yeah. A nice, I, I, yeah, the floral. I'm really picking up. Mm hmm. I'm getting like. Lily, some stuff. I'm getting like a pico fruit too. Like it almost tastes like pico to me for a second. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a little mm -hmm. bit. All right. All right. Herb stored. Herb stored. Cheers. Yeah. 
night and day different. Oh wow, this is much smoother. Um, it tastes huh. fermented. That's what the fermentation does. Wow, yes, yes. This is on its way to becoming a ripe. <laughs> mm -hmm. For sure, this is this is way different. Wow, this is like... And my parameters are way lower than what people say, but it's working. Oh my 44 God. Um, percent humidity and 21 Celsius. And it's only three years apart. This is very little astringency to it. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, this is this would be my favorite one. Yeah. Out of, you know. Out of the boat. Out of these immediate thoughts. You know. So I noticed a lot of floral stuff. And here's the tricky thing too. There's a lot of fruit and all these good things from the first one. Mm -hmm. Loved it. But after we had this, it just tastes smooth. Right? Yeah. But that's because comparison. If we just have this one by itself, the smooth one, the fruits come back. You're like, oh, look at all these fruits. Like, yeah. because your brain isn't overwhelmed with the top notes. No, totally. I like them both. I do like the smoothness. I mm -hmm. think my storage is good. Um, yeah, I like it. Maybe, I, I don't know, we'll, we'll brew that one for a little longer. Yeah, we'll, we'll, do, to, we'll or do Or I don't know what. You're the team master. So pour <laughs> plus ten. One, two, yep. three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Do you want me to pour it? No. Cool. Yeah, well, so do you think, I mean, do you have extra humidity in your room? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's as good as I can do. Um, yeah, I, I've told you I got that big, oh, I've told you, maybe not to you. I have a big jug of water, and just having right. a big jug of water, Brings up my uh, temperature or my my humidity probably almost twenty percent. It's like this wide, mm -hmm. like this. It's a glass thing. You might have seen my room by the trench. Was that big glass thing? Oh, okay, yeah. All right. Herb storage. Now you don't need to do this. You could just store it in a nice dry closet, and your tea will always be good, right? Mm -hmm. But the cool thing about using these parameters is you're kind of mimicking what it used to be stored like and you're going to get darker, older, more aged <clears throat> taste tea mm -hmm. faster. So if you had a really harsh tea, you'd probably be able to drink it faster if you put it in my room. Okay. If that makes sense. Yeah. Okay, this sorry. time... So I want to taste this back to back. I want to take oh, sip okay. for sure, sip. Sure. How's that? Sure. So... I'm not sure. What are you starting with? Herbs? Herb, yeah. Mm. Yeah, it's just, I can taste some more astringency out of that now. But definitely not as much as this. Um, Isn't that nifty? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, yours is just so much smoother. Like kind of the bite is out of it mm -hmm. a little bit, but and I think because I'm, um, no, it's not super high humidity. Yeah, I don't think I'm gonna run any chances of mold ever because mm -hmm. I also got the heat and it's drying out, and I got a fan too. Like, there's no way. Do you know the temperature that like mold kind of comes out? It's got to be quite humid. Yeah, right? I think it's like eighty yeah. percent humidity or higher or something. Mm. Mm. Now, truthfully, I'm like, they're blending together. It's hard to, hard for my tongue, but this, this definitely, the, mm -hmm. the Menku storage? Kunming. Kunming, sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah, this one is definitely higher on the astringency. Probably kept its original taste. Yeah, more. Like more of the fruits and subtle notes, right? And a lot of people prize that. I don't think mm. there's anything wrong with it. I think as the years go on, like um, dry store teas that are really well kept mm -hmm. might be worth more money to, in the long run. Right. Just, I don't know. I don't know. I like what I'm doing. I think it's, I think it's good. Yeah. I don't think I'm screwing the tea up at all. It's sweeter, deeper. This time mm -hmm. we'll do them, the next time we'll do them back and forth. Sure. 
but no. And this cake too is kind of like a more affordable sure. cake too, right? You were saying the impressions was kind of designed for. What were you saying? They're <laughs> um, they're affordable cakes. Yeah. They're uh, they're cakes that are supposed to compete with other big factory cheap cakes. The Manghai. Yeah, the yeah. Manghai in particular. Right. Um, I think they're great. They, uh, in comparison, they're fresh, they're bold, they're strong, but not in the gross way. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Like, these are the things that I like, right? It's like, um, they're refreshing. Yeah. And the Manghai's are normally hardcore. Like, we haven't had any for a while, but I'll bust out some hardcore factory Manghai sometime. Raw Puerz. The, the, the Raw Puerz is what we're talking about here. They're ripe, really good. Yeah. Really good. But their Raw Puerz, um, are... They're an acquired taste until they get older, and then they're every they're the big they're rage. Golden, Everyone yeah. loves them, right? But no, for sure. I mean, so the ripe pu'er of the Manghai was that that was like probably my favorite cake. So before um, we dive into the third, how are you liking this tea? I like it. Yeah, smooth. It's very smooth. Yeah, refreshing. It's good. Yeah, sweet. Yeah, it's definitely got it. Like I'm already cheating up. Yeah, and it doesn't have talking. it doesn't it is aged like some of the material is. 11 years old and sounds like, I don't know, it's nine or something, eight. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, pretty much all regions of Yunnan. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you could say, like, I bought a tongue of this for long-term aging because I want to have this conversation with someone yep. for years to come. But you could go out and buy 20 different cakes, or you could just buy one cake that has everything in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's but true. It, it does make a little bit of sense. And, like... The nutrients you're getting from the soils from these different mountains and different regions are all different too. So the vitamin intake, all sorts of stuff could be extra with mm -hmm. a super blended tea. Yeah. Is the Kung Ming one again? Nice, strong. This, uh, yeah, this has a good bite to it if you like that. Mm -hmm. um, I'm steeping it long on purpose though. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a herb brew, for sure. <laughs> a strong boy. <laughs> we need something to talk about. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, yeah, I tea violence this week. I don't know if I told you a little bit. It a bit. I, um, all I had was a banana. And I'm like, a banana will do. It's good, and it'll go with the fruitiness of my, uh, <laughs> yeah. my raw cake. So, But no, I, I drank way too much. I probably yes. had like eight guy ones and my guy ones are probably a bit bigger than this yeah. so this is 100 mine are probably 150 and uh yeah i just we gotta get you a scale it was close to a liter of friggin tea yeah and then i'm like okay here and then i had to go get something but <laughs> i survived you could also just get like a little box of cookies just buy, buy your tea and you'll be fine no oh, i would eat those Oh, just yeah. like I would just friggin' they would get eaten on no one. They would, yeah, no, that could I can't, I can't. I'm one of those guys. I can't have. I am one of those guys. If you have junk, if I, I buy Oreos, they're gone in like four hours. The, the A family smaller, size. Listen, the smallest <laughs> amount. The smallest amount of Oreos I can eat is a full row at a time. That's the smallest. I take a whole row, and that's how it goes. I think. I think that's why we connect. Mm. To gluttons. Mm. Oh yeah, this is my storage again. This is like full of youthful energy. Mm hmm Youthful tea energy. You feeling that? Uh, yeah, no, I'm <laughs> Yeah, this one's just making me smoother. really chatty. Yeah. I just want to talk and say nothing. Da, 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 da. We're good at that. We're good at thanks for sticking around for mm -hmm. listening to us talk about nothing. Yeah. We hear you we're some people's favorites. Mm -hmm. to drink tea too. And that's what I think our point, the point of doing this is, right Herb? Yeah, just to... Just have somebody to drink tea with. And right? fill in a slot of people's time, right? Like, yeah. I love watching tea videos, I love watching our tea love videos, it. and it's, this is what we gotta do in the western shores, so enjoy, yeah. have fun. That was really close together, so I gotta do a good pour, I see. Yeah. Speaking of, um, China, mm -hmm. Last weekend, Victoria did the Chinese um, New Year uh, lion dance, yep. and I was blessed. Lion enough. dance or lion? Lion. Lion. Uh, okay. And uh, and there's some dragons in it too, and there's a big crowd of people, like a thousand people showed up in our small old Chinatown, and I was blessed with the opportunity through the karate to uh, volunteer 
Nice. So we got a volunteer on these big bamboo staffs and we're spreading the people like water to make room for the firecrackers and the, the lions. Yeah. And it went on for three or four hours all through Chinatown. And it, if you haven't been to a lion dance thing, I really encourage people to check it out because it's beautiful. And firecrackers and these lions, they dance and it's, they eat this cabbage and they get the little um, Chinese packets of money and then they collect cool. money all through it. And that was fun. I would have just done it for that. But we also got lucked out to... Uh, if you volunteered, we got invited to the Fountain Restaurant for a 10-course banquet-style oh, Chinese meal. God. And I got I got showed up right on time, so most of my people that I knew were at other tables. So I had, like, this little guy I know and his mom, me, and then um, five other Chinese members. Some I knew the guy across from me worked in... Uh, he owns a shop in Chinatown that I visit, so mm -hmm. I was like... I was sitting with the OGs, eating the OG food. It had oh, like a lazy cool. Susan, so they, they would take a little bit of food, pass it on. It's pretty much all meat, and it was ridiculously delicious. Well, there you that was the day I definitely identified as a vegan, but I ate every meat on the planet, jellyfish yeah. included. Jellyfish. Um, yeah. It was so cool, and I was talking to this young guy beside me. He, um, yeah, his family's from Guangdong, and we, I told him about tea, and he was like, I didn't, he's like shocked. He was like, I didn't think any white person cared. Right. A statement right out of his mouth. That's cool. And I was like, no, I, I, I drink Gong Fu. And he's like, oh, I know. And then we talked, and he actually told me, that I talked to two people from Guangdong this week, and he told me that his parents were like, they see it as medicine. And his mm. parents were super afraid that he would get too cold because he, I guess he had cold feet. Like, and they were like, don't drink green tea because you're a cold body and you're going to get cold, get sick and die. Like they fully believe that. Okay. And then I, it might've been psychosomatic or actually happened. He had some green tea once and threw up at night. Straight wow. up told me. And then another cat I know from Guangdong, um, he told me his parents are just hardcore into tea they mm. do the three cups chow jo style and they'll even bring it around with them they need it every day and he's like my parents believe they'll get sick if they don't have their tea every day really so like there's oh. medicine and it, it's That's cool so it's cool, cool. you and actually got to uh, inside scoop appreciate yeah the old school culture of it which is really interesting you know that's cool, man. No, like getting in, uh, I mean, Victoria has uh, Canada's oldest Chinatown. Yeah. Right? Yeah, and uh, sure. I saw a video um, about it, too. And it, it was really interesting. You know, the Chinese community was, like, excluded in a lot of ways oh. uh, from, you know, around the turn of the century. It was so, bad. But they, they made their own little, like, community. And, mm -hmm. the, like, like you, you were part of it, right? Like, they, they hired the dojo to, like, yeah, yeah. kind of, you know. Fun. <laughs> space the people out so yeah. they're very self-sufficient you know in that yeah. way but no that's interesting very cool and you know victoria doesn't have as many festivals let's say as toronto does right so like mm. it was beautiful and like the whole time i was like there should be more of these in town there should be more things like this they just but we just don't have it supposedly toronto is a place to go for the multicultural experiences oh yeah no for sure i mean toronto when i left toronto had four or five Chinatowns oh, based wow. in like, there was the original one on Spadina, um, but up where I lived in Scarborough. Mm -hmm. Oh, should we fill that yeah. up? Sure. Sorry. Pause. Pause. Anyway, yeah, so there was one up in uh, Scarborough too, and mm -hmm. me and my friends, we used to go to this place called Pacific Mall, um, and it was uh, a mall, it, it was fully Chinese mall. Like they didn't, yeah, there's no English, That's cool. there's no English, like Shops. nobody, nobody was speaking English. Yeah. It was like literally just like China, a bit of China That's wicked. in Toronto. And we, it was like, we, we used to, uh, you know, get, use the little recreational medicines mm. that are legal now mm. and we would wander around it and, uh, yeah, like the arcades were different and everything was. And they had really unique and cool stuff, awesome food. I love that. I love it that. was yeah, it was really cool, but So that one's my storage. Yeah. This is um coming. Mmm. Mm. Very good. Even the astringency of yours is much uh dialed back. Yeah, it's like blunted. Yeah, so it's the fermentation, right? Mm. Um 
if it was just oxidizing, it would start to taste. And if it was just oxidizing, you wouldn't say that the astringency is blunted. Mm -hmm. Oxidation brings in that red tea taste, which is more dry and has more astringency, right? Yeah. So it's definitely fermenting. So it's not... And there's paragraphs upon paragraphs on the internet of people dissing and excluding these conversations of what? low humidity or low temperature. There's like no way it's just going to oxidize. Wow. We can literally taste that it's rounding out. Mm -hmm. It's um, It has deeper honey fermented notes. That's yeah. not a taste of oxidized leaves. That's a taste of, like you said, ripe pear. It's mm. going in the fermented boom. Yours Bingo. reminds me of Bang. peaches. Yeah. Peaches mainly. Teamwork. Teamwork. <laughs> oh, something we were going to also talk about too. Mm, we got things. An oolong pot. An oolong pot, but it's not mine. This one I'm giving to my beautiful girlfriend. She doesn't fully know about it yet. Oh. Hopefully she likes it. Hopefully she likes it. It's uh, Duani clay. Um, it's in the gong sh Gong Chung shape, mm -hmm. and it's from the 90s, and I bought it from the Chinese tea shop, and the owner there kindly helped season the outside of tea, he probably spent the day doing it, he sent me a picture, literally doing it. Shout out Daniel. Shout out Daniel, and then I, um, I boiled a whole bunch of oolong, that is what the tea's going to be, um, or the teapot's going to be used for, and I soaked it with tea inside and outside for the last two days, and nice. probably even... Soaking a bit more tonight, so it's ready to go for her tomorrow. It's great. It looks great. Nice design. Yeah, I like that yeah. shape. I think, you know, oolongs look really la di da, like too much la di da. So I like the uglier pots. Yeah. I'm like yeah. balances it out. Balances out the yeah. ooh la la. Well, I'm excited too. At the end of February, I'm going to be going to Vancouver. Oh, nice. And uh, I'm coming, Daniel. I'm making a visit. So, what are you going there for? Uh, just to get off the island. Oh, you can spend too much time on the island. You got to get off the island every once in a while. You're going by yourself? No, I'm going to be going with my lady friend. Nice. So, yeah. I thought I was your lady mm -hmm. friend. Well, we don't want anybody to know that. It's okay. It's okay. Nothing wrong being the side piece. <laughs> Okay. So, uh, what you want? We'll do... Yeah. Sure. But yeah, I was just thinking what I should get. I haven't really looked at his site in a while and well, put together, you know, one. a budget. Number one, what teas do you like? Well, I definitely want raws. I'm in the raw mood. Winter... Yeah. Or, oh, sorry, ripe. I'm in the winter ripe mood. So get some ripe. Um, you know, chestnuts roasting on open good fire ripe. type deal. Definitely get some good ripe. Mm. And, uh, yeah. Mm. So this one's getting pretty good. Very good. I want a, I want a daily drinker, though. I want something that I can just, like, you know, a reliable... Yeah, there's one with a peacock on there. And then there's mm -hmm. uh, aged aroma one. They're both under 100 bucks, and they're they're daily drinkers. Okay. Plus, he also got these little Manghai coins and little stubby little balls, and they're really good tea, too. Right. They're kind of cheap. Is it possible to get a daily drinker, you know... Like pay around sixty bucks Canadian a cake. Yeah, the peacock ones. The peacock. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. That's kind of what I. I Wait, was hoping. It might even you know, be cheaper there. Because it, a tea cake. Online at sixty, it might even be more affordable in person. In per yeah, no shipping, whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you know that's kind of what I want to look for, and I don't know. Do you think it's like is it realistic to get a tong of a certain type of manghai right? To be your daily drinker, or is you that could, but you'd... more premium? No. No? Definitely realistic. Around the $60 price range per cake? Yeah. You think so? It's realistic. Yunnan sourcing for that? There's a lot of Yunnan sourcing. Daniel has some peacocks, but... Yeah, I think, especially with right, that's the way to go. Keep yeah. it under 60 or even 50 even 45 Keep it at that price. Mm. And if you like it, get a sample or a cake. I call cake samples. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and if you like it, then boom. There we go. Buy as much because it's going to, you can drink it forever. So what, uh, like how, what is like a standard, how long does a cake last you? 
they last me forever because I, yeah. I have so many. But so, um, many, but so I drink anywhere from nine grams to twenty grams a day on average. It's okay. actually gone down a lot for me. So mm -hmm. if it was let's say ten grams or yeah, ten grams to fill a guy one of rape, right? Um, okay. Got a leaf in my mouth. <laughs> ten grams for a guy a uh, guy one of rape or whatever. That's 35 days every morning. Okay, so like a, a cake a month. Yeah, so if you buy seven you cakes, want, yeah. it should last you six months, and it would. Awesome. Especially if you get a so scale. For 60, so Especially you if you get a scale to know how much you're using every time. Right, so 45 times 7. If, yeah, if 50 you, times seven. If you find, yeah, so, so let's just say 50 times 350 seven. bucks. Is it? Yeah. Oh, there we go. Yeah, and that's that's for six months. Six and like, months. what do you, so I probably, with Tim Horton's coffee, might be a little bit cheaper. No, Tim Horton's coffee, a toonie, a toonie a day, so that's 60 bucks a month, so that's more a month. No, I'm talking about like brewing at your house. Oh, So yeah. a thing, so. That it lasts is, you about a month? No, no, I'll, I'll put in, I don't know, I'm buying like a tin of coffee, and that's around our area, it's probably like around, it's anywhere from like 20 to $25 now. Yeah. For a tin of 907 grams. And how long does it last? I think it might last like two weeks. So that's fifty bucks weeks. a month, but you're drinking garbage. Fifty yeah, bucks a exactly. month, you're drinking ripe and you like it. <laughs> Boom. Easy conversation. We did it. Yeah. We just did it. Take my money. Well this like the thing is coffee, wine, cigars, tea, mm. cheese, all can go to a gourmet level. And if you have a connection to have a gourmet experience, why not? If you want it save some money and go cheap that's great but it's going to come with headaches mm. heartburn um indigestion bad it's going to come with the 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 not quality insurance no. vultures yeah right the yeah and the, the anxiety yeah if you're a neurotic well especially with coffee. coffee especially with coffee so if you're getting um if you're going out buying tim Hortons coffee you're buying um robusta beans Robusta beans are the cheap, bigger bushes that have more caffeine, mm. that is mass produced. It's not what you'd get at like Discovery or these fancy coffee shops. Mm -hmm. That's the Arabica bean that has less caffeine but more tasty flavor. So, nice. yeah, just stuff to learn. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, me and coffee don't really. Don't mix the best? Don't, yeah, it's not the greatest for myself. You like, how do you like coffee? Um, is it, what is once it? a week and good coffee. Really. Yeah, but good what is what is the effect? Because I was at a point where I was drinking probably five cups a day. I'd go out, I probably maybe close to six, you know, because I'd go to the gas station and fill up one of those mm. big ones. So when I was drinking just coffee seven years ago, before I did my second level of tea, mm. um, I two ventis a day. It's or a lot less, of caffeine. Or less. And yeah. indigestion, too sweaty, frequent urination, heartburn, yeah. can't sleep, a little bit of mania, and high glycemic effects too. So Right. Anxiety? Yeah. 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 The thing I liked about coffee is because it, it, it's a definite, you perceive the upperness of it. Mm -hmm. It makes you feel good in the morning. Mm -hmm. You get that and then, you, you know, it helps through the digestion and everything, but... It's not um, every time with tea that that happens. But it's not no. every time with coffee that it affects you. Some days you just have it and it's yeah. like you drank it all day and it did nothing. Well, if you're... <laughs> if you're um, tired, like, coffee is really bad. Yeah, it doesn't even work. Because it just stresses... I, for me, anyway, it just stresses me out. It gives me anxiety. And, and then I got to work and I drive and around. And I mean, I was just saved. I can't, if I had a desk job where I had to look at a computer, I'd probably go nuts because um, at least, you know, I'm, I'm out working, sweating and stuff and mm. using my body, but, um, yeah. So, video games, what you been playing? Uh, video games, I'm, me and video games are having complications right now. We're having one um, of those weeks, um, they're, 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 this is an off week, they're separated right now. It's, it's okay. Well, okay, so. I came to a conclusion this morning. I was I was reading. Don't give me that look. Um, <laughs> this. Yeah. Um, I I watched a video 
uh, about Carl Jung. Okay. And he was talking about neurotics. And I'm like, I'm one of them. So I watched it. <laughs> and, you know, video games for me is an avoidance mechanism mm. for things I need to get over in my life. Mm. Um, and I've kind of come to realize, I always realize that when I'm not working so much in the winter because I freaking play them all the time. Um, but yeah, so I've, I've kind of like just zoning out with them and uh, I don't like it. And mm -hmm. so I'm trying to read for an hour a day now. Mm -hmm. um, since I've made that declaration, I haven't read one hour. Oh, thanks. Since then. <laughs> but I made it. I, you it's heard in my it here, brain. folks. It's, it's, it's uh, steeping, if you yeah, will. Or reality and pretend intermesh exactly. as a new reality. It's ripening. It's, yeah. it's, I've thrown it's the puer. It's in storage. I've thrown the puer in a factory in my mind. It's been wet and I've covered it with a blanket. And now the idea just has to ferment. Okay. And then okay. it shocks on. So let's do this and then I'll talk about the video games I've been, so okay. my storage. Mm. It's just beautiful. It's such mm -hmm. a good tea. Buy it while you can. I, I got yeah. enough now. Well, maybe, but buy it while buy you it can. Buy it from you? No, never. <laughs> never. Well, how are they going to experience it? Oh, you, you mean the actual cake. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so. this storage. This is the dry storage. Different every cup. And like, not just different, like, oh, the tea might be different teas going on. It's like when yeah. it's deep. The other is light and bright, for lack of a better word. This one has become a little too much for me now. I would have definitely stopped drinking, like yeah. maybe two steeps ago, but yeah. this one I can keep. But going. here's the thing, too your danger things are receptoring your, your mouth. My danger things. Your mouth My is tongue. telling you the dangers, but th this is unlikely to get you nauseous. No, I'm, I have no fear of that. Oh. I've, I've drank, or I've, I've drank, I ate a bunch of oatmeal. Okay. And that's like stomach. I did too, actually. The A535 or whatever. I ate oatmeal too. Did you? Oh, so video With what? On it. Mangoes. Raisins. Mangoes. Trail mix. Whoa. Walnuts. Oh, healthy. Prunes. I just had like five teaspoons of uh, brown sugar. Ooh, nice. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, so the video game I've been playing is what? one from... Back in the day, but got re-released. Well, I've been playing two video games. One is Overwatch 2 with the girlfriend. Oh, yeah. I like Overwatch. It's like Cartoon Doom. It's good multiplayer. Beautiful. It's fun, and there's a bazillion different characters with all different games. So kind of like chess in how to attack. And then the other one, um, re-released on the Xbox just for and the Switch is. Oh, right. No, 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 no. <laughs> 007 Goldeneye. Really? Yeah, we could play downstairs on the Cool. <laughs> wow. And it's we could a, do slappers? We could we do I don't, I don't have to. I don't have two controllers yet. We'll have to bring it over. Okay. Wool needs to bring over the Xbox controller. He said he was going to. He's doing his best. He's, He's doing, doing his best. best. He's doing he, he, I, I told him, like, do you want to get double O nerfed? And he didn't write me back. Is this on that just message. this is just out of his generation, right? Yeah, he wouldn't yeah, yeah. have. He his first was like an Xbox 360. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He wouldn't. He He's, he would yeah. know. He's seen it. He's heard about it. It was the first multiplayer shooter that really took off, but it was split screen, right? Oh yeah. Like I spent the whole summer with Legends playing yeah. that game all the freaking time we played it every day we would actually show up at the house with our controllers because uh 64 had the four slots yeah and most people only had one or two controllers or one broken so we bring our controllers we all sit down chips pop that healthy style of, oh yeah uh, well healthy non-healthy style of fun as a young teen it was oh, great beautiful yeah we sometimes would mix it up with like a game of risk oh but yeah there was a solid solid I don't know, six months of double O. Double O seven nice. Goldeneye. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. We would do uh, Smash Brothers early yeah. teens. Grade nine, I remember we'd go to this one guy's house and uh 
we would yeah partake in the uh, what was an illegal activity at that time, and then uh, play Smash. And I was I was good. I w I was probably the best. Oh. Out of all, there was this one guy Joe who would always challenge me, and he would make excuses like, "Oh, Matt's always Fox. <laughs> He's cheap." He's this, he tries to psych you out too much, but, oh. and Joe would be Falco, and, That uh, sounds like the words of a loser, rather. Oh, excuse my language, <laughs> I'm, I'm not good Smash. Joe player. knew who the king was, and no one could contest me. Hey, Joe, I was, if you are watching this, a rematch any time, my, my, my fighter here, he's ready, he's ready, he's ready, go time, go time, Put go time, in. Joe time. Put that's crazy too, cause Smash on the. Uh, did you you never played the? Uh, I'm not good at Smash Brothers. I keep trying. My boy keeps whooping me. It's like it's like my kryptonite of a game. Right. I love all the characters. But I love did the... you play it on the GameCube? Because the GameCube mm, maybe has once. because like Smash Brothers like evolved into like one of the most competitive fighting games of yeah, all yeah, time, yeah, right? Yeah. And they still play it on the GameCube or a GameCube like controller. So that's, like, that's to me, what? that was, like, Peak Smash. Peak Smash. Was the optimal, was the GameCube. And, uh, GameCube really overlooked system, man. That was, like, a... Uh, Beautiful system. It was, it, it came yeah. out, like, uh, it was hated a little bit, kind of like the Wii's and all these things. There was a little bit of dissing, but people didn't like the funky controller at first. But really, if you just use it, it's, like, the most comfortable controller in the world. The it games are for clean. All the the, yeah. the the freezing didn't happen. The mini discs were they worked really well. It was phenomenal. If you could pair that to like the original PlayStation at the time or Nintendo sixty four, it was way above that. They they were competing with maybe the first Xbox and PlayStation two maybe at around the time, but yeah. they had more skipping issues and they had loading issues, right? They did, and and the thing Nintendo has always done its own thing, right? Yeah. Nintendo always tries to find a unique way to play the game and that's that's its appeal too yeah. it's not like doesn't go with the crowd and they're kind of what people say the downfall of the gamecube was it didn't have internet connectivity yeah right they would kind of refuse to do that and the developers didn't have the support for that um well their internet still sucks like well like the internet the switch, back then was well the switch terrible, internet yeah. it's just like you might see the person i don't even know if you see the person's name you see their country like it's not it's not mm. good Online, it's like okay, you're probably playing someone from America. Like that sucks. That's their you should philosophy. Be able to talk. You should. It should be interactive. It's their philosophy, right? I mean, the internet is a kind of an ugly place sometimes. So Especially they, if you cater to children. I get exactly. it. Exactly. And that's that was their thing. They knew kids are going to play this, so mm -hmm. they they want to keep the toxicity of the internet, which is kind of a noble thing, you know. Mm -hmm. And and they keep with the creativity of it and the groundbreaking ideas. So. So we got this is our last deep. I, I think I think this tea has worked. I think Matt is feeling a good impression of you now. Oh, I got tons of impressions. Uh, should, what should we do? Bill Clinton. That's really aging us. Uh, no, that's I'm aging Bill you. Clinton. <laughs> Or what? I, do I, all don't the presidents. I don't identify as a, a president impressionist. <laughs> so yeah, I'm yeah. I'm a meat eating vegan. Identify. Do you have a good impression? Do you like somebody you can, someone famous you can do? I was kind of good at Yoda back in the day, but yeah, I'm not give me a Yoda. No, I probably won't do that. <laughs> well, we'll do that after, unless yeah, unless yeah. there's, I don't know, five comments wanting a Yoda okay. impression. Yeah. I'll do it. But if not, we don't even care. I just so. can't pull them out of the hat. People, like, I had some good ones, but um, people put you on the spot, and then it's a lot of pressure. Mine just comes mm -hmm. spontaneously. Yeah. Out of nowhere, so. Yeah. Um, I can do my friends. I like that. Because they're the people you know best, right? Yeah, well, that, that's it. And uh, friendship being the magic it is. I mean, you know, we... Uh, we do it. We live and we bond and we connect. And uh, there's a branch hitting your house. That was that banging the whole time. Oh, really? I think that's what that is. I think it's it's hitting your... Uh, Wind in the branches the hitting branch the The branch is hitting the uh, east trough. I think they're going to have to cut that sometime. Yeah. Okay, last one, Matt. The last. 
I am the last dragon. So, would you recommend this tea for people out there? Not the one you just ordered. Um, I, no. I, I wouldn't recommend, like, what, are we talking about new people? No, they don't. No, for poor drinkers. Oh. Yours, yes. I mean, um, <laughs> the one... I mean, this is a good, if you if you like the... This is how I'm brewing it. So if it's been overpowering, it, it definitely could be brewed. Yeah, like if that. you, yeah, cause since you like to, uh, quote unquote, crazy. push the gas pedal down. Mm -hmm. um, no, I could drink this. I mean, that wouldn't be my first choice, mm. in all honesty. Um, I would like it aged a bit. So if you so busted just... out your aged one... Uh, the herb style aging, the herb uh, seasoning. Well, in a couple of years, um, my whole tongue will be good. So. Yeah. So, stipulations for his recommendation. My recommendation, I would. I recommend this tea. I think it is, each time you have it, like, and you're only having it once. If you have this tea ten times in a row, every single time it's going to tell you something different. Mm. And this tea, I didn't like at first because it wasn't what I was used to. When drinking raw pour, this creamy note that can happen really threw me off. I was like, what is this? And then the more I sat with this tea and the more I tried it, it's one of my funnest experiences. Well, this is like, the first thing is like an apricot explosion mm -hmm. in your mouth, mm -hmm. um, but a bitter one. So, yeah, so I, I, I don't know. I mean, I have been on Bata Mountain mm -hmm. drinking my longevity and mm -hmm. uh, double happiness. So... Maybe I'm used to a little bit more aged, although I think that's yeah, only... They, no, they 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 taste pretty aged. Do they? Yeah. They taste more aged than these. They probably had some wet storage at first to hype them up. It. I forget the, the year of it. I think it was probably 14. It's 14, 16. but no, they they definitely taste more aged. They must have. Daniel probably picked them up probably a mm. few years after from right. a, a wet storage because they're real deep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they taste really honey. And I, even those, I, I'll, uh, you know, I'll do maybe five grams. Yeah. You know, and just play around with that. I, I wouldn't yeah. do, I wouldn't go past, uh, like, just eyeballing it. I wouldn't put that much in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even uh, 150 milliliter cap and one, so. So we got a yes and a maybe due, due to stipulations. If you're, yeah, I mean, you're definitely, if you're a guy like this, who's tea on his way to tea mastery. I don't know about that, but T well, T full blown T psychosis. Or if you're a little day and night T tadpole like T tadpole, I'll, oh, I'll be a T toad. <laughs> I'm a T. I'm a T toad. T toad. I'll be fun. Like, where am I? Am I in the ripe or am I in a white? Where am I? Yeah. Cool. Okay.